the simplification of a force and couple system is probably one of the most important things that we do in statics. Basically what we're looking at is something that we refer to as equivalent systems, and you can't really tell that I'm writing that, but it says equivalent systems. That this system is the same as that system, because basically we're taking a problem that we don't know how to solve, a complicated problem, and turning it into something that we do know how to solve. So principle of transmissibility basically says that a force can be applied to a body at any point along the line of action. So that means if I have a force here, just chill it out, that there's really no difference between a force pulling on that box or pushing on that box or, you know, finding a little spot in the middle and going along that same thing. I'm assuming these are all along the same, same line. That if you look at this and the sum of the forces is x, um, or the sum of the forces in the x direction along that particular axis is going to be f. Um, now, if I move it up and down, it might behave in a different way. So let me give you an example. So if I said what was pinned here, and I pushed on it right there, it's going to spin one way. But if I were to, say, move the force up here, it's going to spin more. Does that make sense? And I know nothing's spinning because this is statics, but theoretically putting that arrow up there makes it spin more violently than putting the arrow right here. So I can't move it up and down, but I can move it side to side and have no net effect. So, because that'll mess up the moments. So let's do a little, another version of that. So let's say we've got something like um, ourselves a little box here, and we're going to have a 50 pound force right here. Okay? So if we have a 50 pound force right here, um, then we can say, all right, well, the sum of the forces in the x direction is going to be 50 pounds. But if I have this a point, if I took the sum of the moments about a, well, the sum of the moments about a would be zero. Good? Right. As opposed to if I have that same thing, but if I move the force vertically, this is what I was kind of getting at before. If I move that same force vertically, let's say I move it three feet, well, the sum of the forces is still x. I mean, sum of the forces in the x direction is still 50. But the sum of the force, the sum of the moments about a is now actually going to be 50 times 3. It's going to be negative 150 foot pounds. Does that make sense? So these are not equivalent systems, not equivalent systems, because they don't have the same um, moment and forces on both. So the thing is, is that if we desperately want to move that force, let's just say that we've got some really, really good reason we want to move the force. If we really, really want to move the force, then after we move the force, I mean, we can do it, but then we have to account for the fact that there's this really stupid um, moment that we wish wasn't there at negative 150. So you've actually got to replace it with a positive 150 moment. Okay, and why this is amazing is now that three feet is still there. I just didn't write it in. Three feet, and three feet is still there. So what we like about this is now I have the sum of the forces in the x is still 50 pounds, but so this is not equivalent. Not equivalent. Um, the sum of the forces in the x is still 50 pounds, but the sum of the moments about a, and really about any point, we're just picking a because it's easy to find, um, is we have that negative. Um, sorry, we have that negative three times 50. But then we also have the positive 150 foot-pounds, which gives us a zero foot-pound moment, which is equivalent. And we're super happy. Equivalent? Because, well, actually, we're kind of sad because this is actually an uglier picture than the picture we had before. But, I mean, we made an equivalent system. Actually, in real life, I would probably prefer this rather than having to deal with this. But it is the same. It's just an equivalent system. <laughs> so... Normally, whenever we're doing this, what we're actually trying to do is trying to create an equivalent system that is simpler than the one we started out with, so let's do that instead. All right, so let's assume that we have some kind of box. Boxes are easy to draw. We have some kind of box, and there's some kind of force on this box of 100 pounds, and we'll say it's at an angle of 30 degrees, and then we have a 50-pound force over here, and we'll say that these distances here are 4 feet and 3 feet. Alright, good? So now let's say we want to write this, I'll give you a point A, okay? 
So let's say that our goal is to write an equivalent system with the force at A. Okay, so if we're going to do this, basically the idea is we need to look at our original system. So in our original system, we have um, these things that we need to break up into their x and y components. So if I want to get rid of that 100, I can replace the 100 with instead something that's 50 this way. And this way, it's 50 square root of 3. You got it? Okay, so I'm going to erase those two because it's just going to be confusing. So now we have two forces that are 50 square root of 3 and 50. So if I look at the sum of the forces in the x direction, they're in fact 0, right? Because I have 50 minus 50 is 0. So I want to leave that 0. The sum of the forces in the y is still 50 square root of 3. And if I'm going to look at the moment of A, moment about A, the moment about A is going to be 50 times 3 in the positive, negative direction, so negative 50 times 3, so negative 150 foot-pounds. Okay, so all of those still have to apply whenever I rewrite this as a single force at A. Okay. Um, so if I want to rewrite this as a single force, I can. Um, but I'm going to run into the problem that I also still have to have a moment. So I actually probably need to adjust this single force and moment. So the single force has to be at A, but the moment is a free vector. It can be anywhere. So basically the idea is I no longer need those two horizontal 50-pound forces because I can replace it with my 50 square root of 3 right there at A. But in doing so, I have lost the moment about A. There's no moment about A right now, so the only way I can get a moment about A is to manually put in one. So it's going to be a negative moment. I've drawn the arrow in the negative direction, so I've done that as 150 foot-pounds. Um, if you particularly wanted to, you could draw it this direction and label it negative 150, but you can't have it going counterclockwise and label it negative. You just can't do it. All right, so let's do the same thing, except now we're going to do it at B. And you're like, but there is no B. I know. Let's make up a B. Let's pretend B is down here. Now at B. So if you kind of think you know what you're doing, I would recommend pausing the video and seeing how far you can get on your own and seeing if you can get all this put together. So I can throw that into my calculator and I can get the 50 times the square root of 3 times 4 so right now I'm sitting at a negative 346, except I know that that has to be 150, and it's not. Does that make sense? It's sitting at um, it's sitting at 150, but it's not. So I have to do some maneuvering to get back to that. So I need to add some kind of a moment to get it to be. It's not really equal anymore, but I have to add some kind of a moment to get it back to um, negative 150. All right, so I've got negative 150 plus um, basically a 346, and that gets me to 196. So essentially now I have to put in a positive 196 in order to still have an equivalent system because I have put on um, extra mess over here and in order to get back to that 150 then that means I now have to have a positive um, 196 foot pound. So the moment is totally different because I've had to move the force around but these are all going to be what we would call an equivalent system. The sum of the forces in the x is the same, the sum of the forces in the y is the same, and um, the sum of the moments about a particular point is going to be the same. But now this all comes to another question, which no one has asked yet. That's because I don't exist right now. Okay, it's very existential. Um, but essentially, what we're looking at is there's got to be a place, because over here you could say, well, over here we had a negative moment, and over here we had a positive moment, so clearly there's some kind of a sweet spot in the center where that force could be that we wouldn't have any moment at all. And the answer is absolutely, of course there is. I mean, it's math. There's got to be a way to make it work. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to say, well, I don't know where it is. It's somewhere between point B and point A. So let's put it to somewhere here at a generic spot. 
and we'll say it's, you know, a distance over. Now, if I take the moment about a, big A, oh, let's not call it a then, let's call it, I don't care, let's call it um, z. Okay. So we know that if I take the moment about a, I want the answer to be negative 150. Um, oh, well, then let's just me measure it from this direction, that would be even better. Better? So um, if we measure that, that's going to be negative 50 times the square root of 3 times z, and that should get us the negative 150 moment that we're looking for. So without too much trouble, we can divide 150 by 50 times the square root of 3. Thank you. That's what I meant. And we've got 1.73. So if I put this 1.73 distance from here, or um, I guess I could say 4 minus that. I could also say 4 minus that from the other side. Yeah, 2.27 from the other side. I don't know why I did that for fun. So this is an equivalent system. Now here, no moment, no additional moment, like I don't have to hand draw in a moment. No, I'm going to call it a hard-coded. No hard-coded moment necessary. Um, because our force is in that perfect spot. So we've got it perfectly put together in the left-right area. So that now, what, why we care about all this is remember that previously we had this system where we had a force here, and then we had a force here that was at a wonky angle. And so basically we were able to replace that with a single force at just the right spot which is a lot better, right? Because this way, you know, we had all this stuff to deal with and we had angles and it made us sad. Over here, we have exactly one force in exactly the perfect spot and it's an exactly equivalent system, um, which is, well, exactly what we're looking for. All right, now let's assume that you really feel good, you kind of have an idea of what we're doing or you're like, oh, I'm not sure yet. All right, so here's a typical kind of a problem. So essentially what we're going to have you do is to draw an equivalent system with a single force and couple either at the base of the pole or to have a single force somewhere at an appropriate location. Okay, so I strongly recommend you pause the video, try and work through this on your own, um, you know, figure out, well, what was the, um, some of the forces in the y going to be, okay, what would the moment about the base be? Okay, so where would, if I was going to move the force now, what would I have to do to accommodate the fact that that moment is no longer there? All right. Okay, so now assuming you've done this on your own, um, we can look at this one and say, okay, well, the sum of the forces is clearly, clearly going to be 30. Now, if I look at my sum of the moments about the base, and I'll call my base B, the sum of the moments about the base, I'm going to have a 5 times a 15, that's going to be a negative, and then I'm going to have a 7 times a 15, that's going to be another negative, and so that'll give me negative 180 foot-pounds. Okay, which means that if I'm going to redraw this, like this, I can move the 30 pounds here, I can move the 30 pounds here, but then what I have to do to make up for it is I have to put in that 180 foot-pound uh, moment to accommodate the fact that that moment has no longer existed because I've moved the force out of the way. Okay, so now if we we're actually going to draw the equivalent system with only a single force at the appropriate location, that means that that 30 has got to be at just the right spot so that wherever I end up putting it, that it's going to create that 150-pound um, moment. So I need the moment about B, which is going to be given by um, negative 30x. That needs to equal negative 180. It's about too much trouble I can get there. Not 60, but x is going to be equal to 6 feet. So I need to draw this out at 6 feet. So instead of having a force and couple like that, I can just have the, um, the force locate the perfect spot. So again, you've got a situation where I can either have two forces, and I've got to keep track of all kinds of stuff and ideas, and you know, like, oh, what goes here, what goes there? Or I can draw it with everything located at a single point. Or, and again, the, the, moment, the, the moment itself is free. You can go wherever it wants. Um, or I can draw this exactly one force located at the absolute perfect location.